Um, my name is David McCurdy. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for the Governor's Office of Information Technology um, in Colorado. Um, just to kind of uh, lay the ground real quick, um, when I joined the state in 2014, 2015, um, IT was consolidated or the departments were consolidated under me. I have roughly 700 staff that report to me. I am in charge of all stacks of technology from applications to infrastructure. Today we'll be talking about Backup Colorado, an initiative that we kicked off um, several years ago. Um, underneath me, I support all the offices of the governor, pe what people traditionally think of um, in terms of state agencies, so the Department of Revenue, Department of uh, Motor Vehicles, Department of Natural Resources, the full plethora. So on any given day, most weekends, there's something bad going on somewhere, uh, <laughs> just in terms of scale, so you guys can think about uh, how big this project was. Um, before, before I talk about the slide, I wanna talk about why I'm here real quick. I'm here real quick uh, because in February this year, I called my uh, sales rep with Commvault and said, we're going to need you. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping that you guys are going to be there for us. And he said, we're absolutely going to be there for you. We're already working on it, right? That's great. I was like, that's exactly what I wanted to hear because anything else besides that, it's a bad year, month, day for me. Um, but the journey really started before then. The, the journey started in 2014. In 2014, we were two years into being the first state that had legalized marijuana. I'm not sure if I can show that plan on the slide in Tennessee, <laughs> but I'll do it anyway, uh, risk it. Um, we had uh, a server failure, a storage array failure, and we lost all data related to people that um, were, had gone online to register to get uh, marijuana legally or set up businesses, things like that. It was a major data loss. We had to go back several months for that. Uh, as an output of that, there was a major audit. It found that um, the department as a whole, the state as a whole, had a bad backup and recovery policy. Uh, the policies we had, we weren't following. The technologies we're using weren't working. The engineers didn't understand them. The engineers didn't know. I, I, I'm not trained to paint a horrible picture, but it wasn't a great picture. Um, and the output of that is we lost real information that was valuable to the state of Colorado. Um, so we set out um, to solve these challenges. And, and you think about state government, you think about, hey, it takes a long time. One of the biggest things is when you ask for money to do stuff, it takes almost two years from idea to money, and then you have execution. So when you talk about it, we want to ensure all critical and essential systems were appropriately backed up. These are just common things, right? These are the things that when you come to Commvault or you're selecting another vendor are, are minimum, they're table stakes. These are the things that we wrote into law that were outputs for the money. But that, that wasn't the real goal. The real goal of what we were trying to do is we were trying to take the policies we had and put them in, uh, put a system in place or systems in place that protected customer data, citizen data, resident data, agency data. Uh, we live in all in the world, data is the most important thing. Google's built an entire empire around it. But when you think about government, um, there's certain things citizens don't want government to lose. There's certain things that they want protected. Um, their data is one of them. Um, how do we solve those bus uh, business objectives? We um, we went through a very prolonged process and you know, I had just joined the state at the end of 2014. We had gone through a, uh, a re-election at that same time frame and we were out there trying to find a solution or solutions to solve this challenge. And, and these were kind of the outputs of that, but just kind of talking about it in real terms in real life. You know, I have a whole landscape of options in this space and I would come from Catholic Health Initiatives, which is one of the largest uh, healthcare providers in, in the country, and we had other solutions. We had other solutions that worked, and we had other solutions that didn't work. Um, and I was a new customer to Commvault. Uh, I had not used them in the past, um, but it was very interesting as we went through this kind of discernment process of what we had, what really came out is the engineers believed in the product, um, the street believed in the product, um, but the, the most compelling thing was kind of the engineering question. You know, the engineers came to me, I've seen it a couple times. I saw, it, I saw it in the server world, I saw it with VMware where the engineers come and say, hey, we found something different, we found, found something compelling, we believe that we should make a strategic direction here. And uh, that's what we did. So we ultimately selected Conval as a product 
and then I, there was this picture that I wish I had for this presentation, but I had like 30, 40 of my engineers all in the room, and I'm trying to change how backup and recovery and disaster recovery services for the state of Colorado was going to look across all those agencies. So these people had never even met each other. They were all working as part of a larger initiative that the legislature approved to kind of transform this, right? And it was a big deal, right? You get all these people in the room and, hey, we're going to go accomplish this thing. It's never been done before. We're a fairly new organization. We got consolidated as an IT organization in 2010. So you're saying four years later, we're going to reinvent the wheel from scratch. And that's just what we did. We, we brought in a compelling solution that the engineers believed in. We rolled it out. Uh, and we achieve these goals. But fast forward to 2018. So that call I made to Steve Bell in the back was a ransomware hit that we took in February of this year. So we had just finished rolling out these giant departments. So think of how big Department of Corrections is. We have prisons all over the state. We have uh, Department of Motor Vehicles uh, with you know, offices all over the state. We have Department of Transportation, which I'm going to talk about here, with offices all over the state, hundreds of locations, uh, lots of data, over 193 servers uh, supporting um, this environment. And I get a call saying we have a ransomware. Well, a CTO with 35,000 PCs, 2,000 plus servers, there's a ransomware event once a month, right? And typically, it's a single PC that someone's downloaded an email, um, and they've got ransomware in their PC, and we come, we take the PC, we see what we can do with it, we bring them a new one, and they go on. But this was much bigger, and anybody, you guys can Google it. Uh, we made press, we made national headlines. Mm -hmm. uh, we were down for a better part of a month from an IT back office perspective. But good news is Department of Transportation never went down from a road perspective, meaning our signs operated. The back, the back office is really what was hit. The front office uh, or the, the business of what we think Department of Transportation does in Colorado, that always functioned. And that was a, a part of a larger initiative we did at Colorado called Secure Colorado, which was segmenting the systems, putting layers of security tools in place, things like that. That being said, uh, well, I'll back up one second. It's a funny kind of aside. Secure Colorado was an initiative kicked off because the CISO's budget when I joined the state was, or the year before I joined the state was $7,000. Okay. Now, there was other money for security throughout the state, but we're talking about coordinated enterprise direction, right? And so we shifted that, and now it's a multi-million dollar um, uh, project that's ongoing because the security landscape is changing. And Backup Colorado flows into that uh, in terms of protecting that data and securing that data. So just kind of an aside there. That being said, we had an actor, most likely out of Eastern Bloc uh, of Europe, that worked in our environment for several days with the intention of bringing the entire department mm -hmm. down. Um, they didn't bring the entire department down, but they hit us pretty hard. Um, and they came in in such a way that it bypassed the majority of our tools. Um, so they didn't come in through the front door, they didn't come in through the back door, they came in through a side door. Um, and because they came in through a side door, uh, it, it, it missed a lot of that north-south traffic. Uh, one of the horrific things of this is we were actually installing an east-west tool um, the Friday of the week that we were hit. So we missed uh, not having all this pain and coming and talking to you guys today by a week. Um, <laughs> that being said, we were hit, and uh, you know this is where you find out how good your team is. This is when you find out how good your tools is, and that's why I'm calling Steve. That's why I'm calling Conval and said, in 2014, we got the money. In 2015, we kicked off the project. 2018, we need you. Right? This is a big deal. I know what ransomware is. Uh, for any of you who don't know it, one of the number one questions I get is how much was the ransom and how much did you spend? And it, it's really, an, it's not a good question to have because paying a ransom, especially to a known terrorist group, is a federal offense, right? And there's a lot of companies that's been paying ransoms over the last two years and they don't really know this and they're actually encouraging more and more of this behavior. But I knew because of the protections we put in place that paying a ransom uh, was not one of the things we were gonna be doing as part of this process. Mainly because I had confidence in the tool sets we had. Uh, I don't know what I would have done uh, had it been uh, very different. Other organizations, especially healthcare in 
2016 paid a lot of them, but they had complete losses. And there were several other big uh, government agencies that were hit right after us. I don't know if they were complete losses, but all, by all account news reports, they lost entire systems, uh, massive amounts of data, tens of millions of dollars worth of expense. Colorado did not have that because we had the right team, we had the right technology, uh, and we had the right processes in place to come up. Uh, just kind of some fun stuff around it. A CTO of the state of Colorado, you get some resources you wouldn't normally get. Not necessarily in terms of backup uh, and recovery, but we had National Guard fly in. We had several uh, executive uh, federal agencies come in, agencies I've never heard in, uh, specifically <laughs> on trying to track this because it was, it was considered an active shooter event for several weeks there. That's why our recovery wasn't very fast. I wanted to go much faster in terms of recovery, but the first thing you have to do is make sure you're not dealing with an active shooter, uh, in this case, uh, in your house. Um, so, Jeez. what was the output of that? When we got everything back up, we had recovered 193 servers. The average restore for, uh, per server was about 30 minutes, uh, and no data loss. Like, that's the biggest deal out of this, is all of our servers, because of the real-time protection, because of when we were hit at two o'clock in the morning, most of our backups and syncs had happened. Um, so we were in a very good state. Now there was a couple of instances where the agency said, hey, just for safety sake, I wanna go back way before this event ever happened, and we're gonna take that. Um, that instant, that event, that backup, that type of stuff. We had also had a, a project on our desktop side, so we protected a lot of our, our desktop data, but that's a big deal, right? Because if you guys know anything about the street and what happened this last year, um, no data loss is a huge deal. You can actually hear uh, the executive director for CDOT talk about this. It's a really big deal for them. He's talking to the other dots around the country about this, um, but the reason why I'm here um, is uh, this organization uh, protected my job, protected my boss's job, and ultimately protected the residents of Colorado and the Department of Transportation Colorado. It was a really big deal. Uh, it wasn't my first event in my life, but it's definitely one of the more successful ones in terms of you know where we were and where we came to. So where are we at across the state, right? Because CDOT was hit, but we were very segmented. We protected the rest of the state. Um, from a security layers perspective, but we now have three environments. We have a total of 2,800 servers that we're backing up. Um, we just went live with one of the largest health and human services applications in the AWS cloud. That's using Commvault as well. Um, and we have two environments and two data centers that's blocking up the state. And so with that, I'm open to any questions you may have. You guys are a new Commvault customer. This is an interesting selection based on how much money has gone into newer companies to get out their name? Why Commvault? Um, I think it was a number of things. A lot of the um, companies we were working with, just so kind of being CTO and kind of looking in the future, a lot of what I saw in my previous 20 years was um, either kind of this alignment between hardware and software, which if, we, if the move to the cloud was real, as I thought it was gonna be in 2014. I didn't want that tie. Two, uh, it was kind of this, 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 this kind of, <clears throat> this focus on protecting data. And I also liked what they were doing in terms of how they were gonna use that data in the future. I, you guys heard a little bit about it and I was trying to pay attention while I was you know, working on my slides. But this idea that we're gonna do, do artificial intelligence and kind of maybe even big data projects uh, with this data. So I like kind of the innovative look at where Combat was going. But to be frank, it was the engineer selection. We did bake-offs, we did a proof of concept. Uh, everybody thought it was in the bag for another organization, but in the end, uh, Commvault won, and they've delivered much faster, much more reliable backups. I think it's the full technology stack of how they think about data, how they think about storing it, uh, the kind of commodity hardware approach. I don't care if you're spending a lot of hardware or a little bit of hard hardware. It gives me options in terms of speed, disk, all that kind of stuff. And if I tie myself to a vendor that has predisposed hardware, I don't know what the future is going to look like, right? So you just let on who the competitor was, but the, um, the question on your older uh, solutions that you moved from to this. Um, obviously, you're a government, so you have long retention requirements, pretty much almost infinite, I guess, right? So, how, I mean, how did you incorporate the data from your old systems into Commvault somehow? Did you 
rehydrate, re, re, re back up, or do you still have, you still have those old things laying around to restore? So it's a mix of everything. There's some data that we have out there still in other systems. The data that we need to move, we moved into Commvault, and then we did kind of a, a net forward approach around that. So a little bit of a mix. Um, uh, uh, kind of the history type stuff. We consolidated in 2010, so it really was everything to my backup is on the server underneath my desk to big box, I don't want to move to Commvault because I'm very happy with my solution. But one of the things we brought was kind of, a, hey, if we do it 15, 16, 17 different ways, that's a surefire way to fail as well because you're not good at any one of those technologies. So the consolidation is what we're all trying to do in IT. That was a big part of the picture as well. So, so your comment about um, not paying ransoms, just thank you for saying something, but what I'm curious about is that one of the reasons why that happens is no one plans on paying a ransom. It's a tremendous fear and anxiety that sets in if any of these events occur. Now that this one event went, I mean, quite honestly, as well as it did, I mean, some of the things you mentioned as far as how fast and how much you were able to recover is kind of impressive. Do you, has this changed your view of ransom attacks? Has this, has this made it so that next, the next one occurs, you're not going to feel as under pressure, you're not going to feel, how is this, I mean, has this basically reduced the anxiety or the fear that these attacks bring because now you've actually seen a light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, I, I would say yes from the perspective of we did some, uh, as you roll out any solution, you do some basic kind of, hey, let's do a test, let's go to a, a DR site, that type of stuff. But when you get into a real world situation, it's not quite the same thing. And one of the big challenges I had at Catholic Health is when we did restores, the system we had in place there was just taking forever, like days uh, to restore, right? It was just nasty. There was links and stuff involved, so I don't want to put it all on the solution, but uh, the speed, the, the confidence that not only the vendor had, but also the engineers had that this was going to work because they wouldn't let me test these restores for like two weeks because they were, until they were sure the shooter wasn't in the system, they did not want to expose their backups uh, to it, right? So I had to sit on my butt for two weeks just waiting. When am I going to get the? I just want to test one system, just one system to give me a little more confidence. So, like yes. Law enforcement's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it does give me more confidence. I would make the exact same call I did tomorrow if it was another Department of State, right? It's an all hands on deck type of situation. I'm not going to take. Uh, I'm not going to take stock in what I did and just say, hey, it's going to be great. You got to treat these things uh, as any type of uh, major disaster, which is what it was. How we came out of the disaster, how we prepped for it is what made the difference. But uh, yes and no, I mean, I, I would still go through everything I did today, but the confidence I gained in seeing 193 servers for short, the confidence I see when the executive director of CDOT knows what ransom is, knows what Commvault is, knows things about securities that none of his peers know about going through this. It's 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 an amazing experience. I wish on nobody. So, so just a quick quick follow up. I mean, you guys went through this because you got caught and you bled. I mean, you had events happen, real world events, both the data loss before and this ransom attack. You have a lot of other state institutions where right now it's still an insurance play. They don't. They're they're, they're planning for something that might happen. Ha, has there been any? Has anyone reached out to you guys? Has there been any kind of cross knowledge? Has anyone else benefited from what you guys learned from this? So we talked to several of the organizations that hit after us. We've talked to several uh, government organizations posts. So we've been evangelizing this. This is one of the ways I'm evangelizing it. Uh, not necessarily just, you know, the vendor, but, you know, there's a, a presentation I'm doing about how to deal with one of those disaster situations and the groups that you need to set up and how you organize and things like that. So there's a lot to be learned. Um, these are once kind of in a lifetime events, hopefully, uh, or never, but uh, there are things that we're passing on to organizations uh, because it's compelling. You never want to be into them, but you're right. You're right. Um, most people think of them as, hey, this is just something I don't have to worry about. I, I came up, uh, I was a server guy really early in my life, so I, you know, I got burnt enough in my life that I never wanted to use tape again, and that was the first question I asked, is this is not a tape solution, is it, right? So uh, thank God it's not, and so we didn't have to deal with, uh, you know, uh, I can't read the tape correctly, so let's get an older one, let's try that, oh, that's bad, you know, you guys all know, I can see it in your eyes, so. 
So, David. Uh, yeah, but did they go down? Wasn't usually the they, they were already down the road with the the Commonwealth decision before you got there, or did, once you got there. No, that was like decision number two on my plate. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they had started the process. They were going through RFPs. Okay. I'd asked them to bring in some other vendors to look at it, right? So I was right there at the table when the decision had to get made, okay. right? So. So. Um, did you declare a disaster? What was the process? What what mechanism did you did you um, did you kick off to have the team all kind of come into action? And did that work as 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 planned in the dress rehearsals? Yeah. So uh, we did have a major incident plan. We kicked that off. Uh, we sent out our security uh, operations team. Um, they got out there. They assessed the situation. They said it was. Uh, really bad. They use other words. Um, <laughs> um, then we, uh, me and the CISO went on site there and started organizing the team. We had done mock drills in past years with the National Guard, so the National Guard started landing people in. Um, and, and we built a pretty large team of vendor partners. Uh, uh, I was able to draw from organizations around the state that were under me and some external organizations. And then ultimately, um, uh, the governor did declare one of the first uh, uh, disasters related to a security event. I think it was a very kind of important step because I don't think this is the last time the country is going to go through one of these things. So I think it was an important step. There were dollars set aside for us in case we needed them. Um, but uh, ultimately, I, I think it went as swimmingly as possible other than there wasn't enough network. You know, when you have that many people come in, um, uh, you, there's just not enough network, so we actually uh, brought in a new technology solution to deal with that. But outside of that, it went, it went smooth a, as it could go in an active shooter situation where you're going to have security guys saying, we're not sure, we're not sure, we're not sure, are you ready to move forward? And then that's the hard part. That's the executive part. That's when, hey, the 22 years of technology experience, we're ready to go. Let's restore this thing and let's get it done. All right. Hey, David, the, the Commvault has this honeypot Thing. Did they detect the ransomware in process? That's a great question. Commvault was the first technology in my stack that sent an alert on this ransomware. <coughs> it bypassed all other layers. Commvault detected that there was encrypted files on disk as part of a backup and sent an alert to my security ops folks. And that's how we first came to know that we were under attack, which I think is very kind of compelling. Like, I, I, I wasn't sure I was going to share that or not here, but uh, since you asked the question, it was, I, I'm not saying there's a security detection tool, but I had security detection tools all over the place. And two vendors caught this variant. And Commvault caught it one way, and the other vendor caught it another way, but Commvault was first. So I thought that was pretty cool. My team's actually yeah, that's, that's the more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That is the more interesting thing. I would have been like, what? Commvault said what? Okay, cool. It's got to be wrong. Yeah. It's got to be wrong. No, I can't. Backup tool. Yeah.